Hey again, it's Lauren from Doodle IT, and in this video I'll be talking about computer security. We'll be covering topics like what types of threats are out there, and what can we do to stop them. Let's start by talking about threats to our computers. One you've probably already heard of is a computer virus. A computer virus is different from a regular virus because it's not actually microscopic bacteria. It's a rogue software program that attaches itself to other programs and data. Once it is hitched a ride on a piece of software and you install that same software, the computer virus is able to copy itself from file to file, harming your computer's data, other programs, your network, and even open up a secret backdoor that hackers can use to enter. They're like super spies, but the evil kind. Similar to the computer virus is a worm. Not exactly an intimidating name, right? However, these worms are actually very dangerous, more dangerous than a computer virus, because they don't need to attach themselves to another program in order to be able to run. In fact, they spread through computer networks, which, as you know, are everywhere. They can execute the same kind of damage to your computer, data, and network that a virus can, and this opens up a world of problems for your computer. Next up in this rogues gallery is a Trojan horse, and if you're a history buff like myself, this name may sound familiar. A Trojan horse virus is named after an old Greek story where an attacking army tricked their enemies into opening the gates to their castle by giving them a peace offering. To the defending army, the peace offering appeared to be a giant wooden horse, however hidden inside were a troop of soldiers. Once the horse got inside the castle walls, the troop revealed themselves and wreaked havoc on their enemies inside the gates. Now, a Trojan horse virus does a similar thing, only the Trojan horse is a software program, and the castle walls is your computer network. Simply put, a Trojan is a software program that appears to be safe, but does something unexpected behind the scenes once it's downloaded. They can do the same damage as a worm or computer virus, but on the bright side they can't replicate themselves, nor can they run unless the user manually opens the Trojan program. Fishing, despite what it sounds like, is not a peaceful way to spend a weekend. In computer terms, it's actually an email or text message that pretends to be legitimate, but in truth is looking for you to divulge confidential and personal information to it. Phishing is also closely tied to spam, which is another computer threat. It's not so popular anymore because most email providers have a high-functioning spam filter. If you want a good example, the Nigerian Prince email scam is a classic phishing scheme. The next couple threats are less dangerous for individuals but can severely affect businesses. First up of these is a denial of service attack. In a DOS attack, a swarm of computers flood a business's website requesting service. If the website cannot keep up, it can become very slow or it could crash completely. This can lose the company a lot of business, especially if they are based online. Now, in order for a denial of service attack to take place, a botnet must be created. A botnet is a collection of computers that have been specially compromised by a virus, worm, or trojan so that they are controllable by a third party. Another threat to business computers and networks is called sniffing. Sniffing involves eavesdropping on a network's communication in order to get proprietary information like email, confidential reports, company files, and more. These are highly used in cyber espionage. They can affect individuals as well, but much less so. So, by now you have learned all about computer viruses, worms, trojan viruses, phishing and spam, as well as denial of service attacks, botnets, and sniffing. It seems like the entire internet is out to get you, right? So how do we protect ourselves from all of these crooks? Well, the first line of defense is the computers and their hardware. When computers are being developed, they preemptively try to protect your data by considering six things, authentication, access control, data confidentiality, access integrity, non-repudiation, and availability. Authentication focuses on making sure that the person accessing the computer is who they say they are. This involves things like passwords and security questions. Access control works to prevent unauthorized use of resources. For example, if you and your siblings share a computer, you might have different login profiles. You can't access your siblings' information from your account, and they can't access your information if they're logged in on their account. Data confidentiality makes sure that data is protected from being sent places it shouldn't be. And data integrity makes sure that data being received is from a trusted entity. 
Non-repudiation provides the ability to trace data back to its original source. This is especially useful if something goes wrong. Finally, availability means that the users can access information in a specified location in the correct format when it's needed. Computers do what they can to make everything safe. However, viruses and the like are getting more and more sophisticated, so oftentimes additional measures need to be taken. Users like yourself can choose to add firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and antivirus software to your computer in order to protect yourself and your data. Firewalls are either installed within your computer's system or at the gateway to your network. They are designed to block unauthorized access while still allowing you to communicate outward. They use a method called packet sifting to look through all incoming data for any harmful viruses. Intrusion detection systems analyze a computer's habits and blocks any activity that appears to be abnormal. For example, if you usually access your network from home and suddenly a user is attempting to access it from Timbuktu, the intrusion detection system will block this action until it receives the appropriate verification. Finally, there is antivirus software. This software looks for common patterns of code that usually show the signs of a virus, worm, or trojan. It also looks for abnormal behaviors in other programs in order to better detect new kinds of threats. The downside of this is that it could slow down some computer processes, such as opening files, mounting external drives, and opening programs. Now we've looked through some of the potential threats your computer faces, as well as how your computer attempts to protect itself and how you can help it. Hopefully you've learned something useful today. Keep your computer safe, and we'll see you next time.